What is up everybody and welcome to this month's Tech Tip Tuesday video where we will be talking about customer returns. We will be using the customer returns function to record the return of parts that were previously shipped to a customer from a sales order, from a job, or from stock. When parts are rejected from a customer, the job boss system requires the parts to be returned against the original pack list so that the return information is recorded against the correct delivery line. One thing to consider is in the job entry function itself, the status of the job must be in an active, pending, or complete status in order to return this pack list against the job. Uh, if the status is in a closed status, of course, that does prevent you from updating any costs on the job. And a return of products obviously affects the cost on the job or the, or the working process. So just be aware that the status must be pending, active, or complete. Back on the customer returns function, I want to show you before I get started here, uh, there are two buttons here. One is return to stock and one is return to delivery schedule. So I do have a couple of options that I need to consider before I start this um, customer return. Um, is it something that I shipped off of, off of a sales order? Then I would be returning it to stock. If it's something that I shipped off of a job and it needs to be reworked, that would be an example of why I would use this second button here, which is return to delivery schedule. Then of course you would have to update uh, or rework that part and update the labor cost on that as well to make sure that your labor costs are reflected properly on the particular job that you are returning items to rework. All right, let's get started on this customer return. Uh, previously, I had shipped uh, off of a pack list a uh, parts 100 parts to a customer I think it was Toro and uh, they have rejected two of those parts so I'm going to take two of those parts back out of the 100 I believe I sent to them so first thing I want to do of course is auto number my return pack list so I have 30018 is my auto number I'm going to tab and that's going to give me access to the detail tab right away um, I've so I'm not defaulting to the general tab but to the detail tab most likely because the information I fill in here is going to backfill the general tab once I tie it to a customer. So the only option I really have here is to click on the magnifying glass. I'm going to go ahead and choose that customer here by clicking on the magnifying glass. And I'm going to search for my customer and my customer shipment selection uh, for Toro Manufacturing Company. And I'm going to apply my filter to see what pack lists I have in the system or what items I've shipped to my customer off of which job and which pack list I use to do that. This is the pack list 30014 here. So I'm going to drag that over to the selected shipments window and click OK. And now when I hit the save button, you'll see that my information all gets pulled in from that um, pack list number tied back to the job number. And to verify what I said earlier, my general tab is now backfilled to Toro Manufacturing Company with the shipment address um, that was input into the pack list in the first place. So uh, customer return, return starts on the detail tab and then uh, in, information backfills from the pack list from the job and the customer master file. So now um, I have uh, shipped oh, 100 to Toro and they have rejected two of them. So um, as you can see, the gray fields here prevent me from entering any information into any of these fields, but I do have a return quantity field that is open. They want to send two parts back to me out of that 100 because they're not satisfied with them. I know at this point that I'm most likely going to rework them. Um, so I'm going to type in two here for return quantity. And the only option I have is to return to delivery schedule. So in effect, it's putting two uh, parts back um, to the uh, job and it's actually going to create a new promise date or promise quantity and a new delivery line on the job itself on the deliveries tab of the job once I do this. So when I click on or hit type in two and hit the tab key and then um, add to delivery schedule by clicking this button here and save that. Notice I have delivery added check mark and return quantity of two. Once I save that now if I go back to my job entry function and refresh this job. I'll show you on the deliveries tab for job 10044. I have a new deliveries line here. I'm sorry, a new promise quantity here of two right there uh, with the promise date of today's date because job boss adds the 
current date or today's date as the promise date when you add a new promise line. So on the uh, deliveries line that was added with the promise quantity of two, I can change this promise date based on how long I think it's going to take me to rework these parts. Maybe I can get work, rework them today, ship them again in three work days. So Friday, Monday, Tuesday, get them back, those two parts back to Toro by the 28th. I'm going to save that. Now, of course, I can rework this part um, by adding labor time to it and reworking it so it's acceptable for my customer. Once it is reworked, then I can obviously ship it back to my customer uh, off of the job. We're using the customer shipments jobs function. Just a couple other things to consider here before I end this video. Back on the customer returns tab, if this uh, return had derived from a sales order originally, uh, the return parts would be placed back on that sales order unless, of course, I uh, clicked on this return to stock button. So either this button would return it to the sales order itself or this uh, button here, the first one, which is return to stock, I could have returned it to stock at that point. Also, um, when you return some an item to stock, it actually goes to the primary location uh, that is listed on the material master file general tab. And uh, if it's not the right location at that point, you could do a material adjustment and move that to the correct location. And if you do own job boss accounting, you would use the accounts receivable unfinished billing report to see that the customer return has been processed and to let your accounting department know that they would have to create a credit memo um, or generate a credit memo for that return as well. I hope you have enjoyed this month's Tech Tip Tuesday video on customer returns. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great month. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.